My name is Allison Sasso, your personal tarot reader in Kansas City, and I read tarot every Sunday at Weston Wine Company, and I read online and over the phone, and I was reading more in Kansas City, but with COVID, you have to kind of, kind of had to cut back on in-person readings and events, but that's what I do. I read tarot for people. Amazing. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> and we're here today to talk about the 301, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, you, you said you'd written something a bit about this card. What, what did you write about it? Right. Well, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram or any of that, I've been obsessed with Rust Belt Arcana since it was gifted to me by a friend. I really enjoy the deck. And I think it's a unique way to look at the tarot because it's not the normal Rider Waite Smith. I say normal, like the traditional Rider Waite Smith imagery. And I think that it's something that can really bolster your intuition. And so the, the best part about this deck was trying to discover what did Matt and David mean when they picked this specific tree or this specific flower and trying to puzzle that out. And I, I really liked the three of wands because as you can see in the card, it's, it's very fiery and wands being the suit of fire, it just stood out, it, it pops. And what I tried to figure out I was like, okay, let's learn about the sugar maple, which is what is on the card. I'm like, okay, why, why did they choose the sugar maple? So I started to research the sugar maple and I found out that you can only harvest the sap for the sugar maple in winter. You it takes 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. And I was like, okay, so how does that tie into the Three of Wands being a card of expansion, a card of goals and planning and new horizon. What do the threes mean? How does this tie in? And I thought to myself, well, the threes in tarot generally represent, they're all kind of community cards in a way because three represents coming together. Even, I mean, we have the Three of Cups, which is like a big party and celebration. The Three of Swords, well, you wouldn't think that grief or sadness would be a community experience, but it very much is because when one person grieves, if you have a heart at all, don't we all grieve in a way? So that's a community experience as well. The three of, what was the other one? Oh my gosh. Three of pentacles is literally about collaboration and coming together to create something that we couldn't have created by ourselves. So I thought, what does the three of wands have to do with that community? And if you look back to the two, and you think about the planning stages, the three is the initial launch of that plan and seeing things happen right before your very eyes and being like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is a taste of the sweetness. This is a taste of this whole process that I thought might never have come to this point. And it's beautiful. And the four after it is like this celebratory, like, yes, you've launched this. Now let's celebrate and have a big party about it. But there's more to be done. It's not the end of your journey. It's, it's just the beginning. And it's something truly magical. And I really like it. Oh, that's so awesome. That's such a great description of kind of how that came together. Uh, is there a spread that you typically use? Or is there a combination of spreads? What's your method on readings like? Well, I... I have a tendency because I read at events and at the winery to, to default to the Celtic cross because it's something that even people who know very little about the tarot have seen, uh, at least on you know TV and movies and things, whether or not they know what it is. But I actually use one of my own spreads. Uh, I call it the let's talk about you spread and I've, it's one I've created on my own. Um, but I, I, I think that <laughs> this is going to sound, I don't know, maybe pretentious, but a good reader can create a spread for any situation based on a querent or a client's question. So I would just say to anybody who wants to know, like, what spreads do I use? Just trust yourself. Trust yourself to help a person and be their guide. And you, you can you can use the cards in any way. That's great. That's do you, uh, have you published anything about the your spread that you use? Your Let's talk about you spread. Oh, that or is, is that something you hold closely? A, oh, no, a, I would be happy to publish something on it. I don't think I have, being being the mother of a small four-year-old, I don't get as much time <laughs> yeah, as I would yeah. like to actually do things. But he's going to preschool soon, so I'll have a lot more time to get on it and publish things. No, it's not a closely guarded secret. I'd be happy to share that with anyone. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, just 
your experience with tarot, how did you come to it? What was your, you've been immersed in it. How did you come to it? Actually, this is, this is a good thing. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a sad story actually. So I'm, I'm glad we get to share it because this came up talking to a client this Sunday. So I've struggled a lot with pregnancy loss. Like our, we, we just struggled to have kids. So, you know, we got our one and that's basically kind of where we are. And a friend of mine said, Hey, you should look into studying the tarot to help you in between like therapy sessions. And like, I just dove right in and I loved it so much and it does help. And even my therapist was like, Oh no, that's a great thing in between sessions to kind of look into how you can navigate and um, kind of like for a guidance tool in between to see like, what do I need to know for success for today? Or what, what might be coming my way, you know, it helps you be a little bit more prepared for the day. And I just like to share that because like I said, I was talking to this client and she was like, oh my God, you just, you speak so candidly about that. I too have suffered from pregnancy. I never talk about it. And I'm like, oh, it's way more common than you might think. And part of how I go through things is to be open. Like part of my self-therapy is to just be super open and honest about it because you find that more people have suffered through that than anybody realizes. And I realize it's a really weird roundabout way to be like, how did you come to the tarot? But that's exactly how I came to it. I mean, I did see Miss Cleo when I was growing up too. So she was technically my first introduction to the tarot, but yeah. Tell them Cleo sent you. She was awesome. Part of my uh, childhood there. Uh, Okay. These are supposed to be short. So I'll ask one more question and then we'll kind of stop the recording, but uh, why Rust Belt Arcana? I didn't say that you've mentioned that's kind of your home deck. What is it that made it work for you or differently than the other decks you use? I think, and I think a lot of tarot readers would agree with this. There are just decks that speak to you and decks that you have, you feel more of a connection to. And I know how woo woo that sounds coming out of my mouth. That's fine. I know how I sound. It's cool. But This one just speaks to me. It is my absolute favorite. It's the one that I feel the most connection with. Like when you shuffle, like lightning goes up my arm when it's like, okay, it's ready. It's time to go. And I I have several others and none of them have had the same connection that this deck does. So that's, that's it. That's it simply. I mean, I love your take on the essays in Rust Belt. I think that they're absolutely fantastic. And even if you're not a tarot reader, get, get the Rust Belt book and do it anyway, because you you can, you learn so much and it actually helps you really connect with the natural environment that we don't really think about anymore in our fast paced world. And I, it's just, it's, it's gorgeous. I love it. I really love how you kind of embodied that uh, sugar maple and that process. And I think that's kind of the idea behind it was to try to embed yourself in the landscape and experience the ideas behind the cards in the landscape as being kind of alive and co-present with you. Right. I mean, that's the idea. I agree. I completely agree. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Thank and, you uh, for reaching out. Super this dope. Is, I would, I will do any number of videos again. This is so fun. <laughs>